Hi, thanks for joining me in another video. Today we're going to look at another EV option from Kia. This is an EV that starts around $40,000 MSRP and is one that may offer more than you'd expect. Let's look at the Kia Niro EV. Before we begin our day with this EV, let's check in on the current mileage. The car is charged to 100% and the car estimates 278 miles on the normal driving mode. The odometer is currently at 2,872 miles. The new EV has an EPA range of 239 miles, so at the end of the day we will see where we are at and plug it in to test its charging capabilities. I'll follow back up later in the video with the real world range. Kia introduced the first generation Niro in 2016. Over the years, Kia has then offered a plug-in hybrid and a fully electric variant. Today we have the 2022 Kia Niro EVS. This EV is currently offered in three trims, the S starting at around $39,000, the EX which starts at $39,990, and the EX Premium which starts at $44,650. Interestingly, the pricing between the S and EX isn't too far apart, only about $1,000. All trims have an EPA estimated range of 239 miles, and on a 100 kilowatt DC fast charger, you can add 100 miles in about 30 minutes. The Nero is only offered in front wheel drive, and the motor can output up to 201 horsepower. It has a fuel economy rating of 112 miles per gallon equivalent, which is good for a car of its size. Looking at the exterior design of the CUV, you can see there is a closed off grill. Since this vehicle is electric, you don't need as much airflow, just a small vent at the bottom is used. The grillless nose also helps with its aerodynamics. In this area, you'll find the charging port. You can also see Kia's new badging all over the vehicle, including the front grille, steering wheel, wheel, and the tailgate. There are blue accents around the car, some surrounding the air intake. These blue lines were exclusively designed for the Nero EV, setting it apart from the other models. Nothing fancy going on with the door handles. We've been seeing a lot of flush door handles on EVs for better aerodynamics. The design is pretty conservative, but that's not a bad thing. It's a decent looking vehicle at every angle. You can choose from six colors for your paint. This one is an Aurora Black Pearl. Its exterior measurements come in at 172.2 inches in length, width is 71.1 inches, and height is 61.8 inches. For a better sense of size, its length and width are a little bigger than the Chevy Bolt EUV, but much smaller than the Tesla Model Y. Plus, look at how tall I look compared to this car. <laughs> All right, so how is the storage? It has a cargo capacity of 53 cubic feet with the rear seats folded down. Let's see what we can fit in the trunk. I have a few suitcases. Looks like they fit just fine. You can fit another small one here. You could probably assemble this much better than I did. Let's see if we can close the trunk. Let me make sure that is closed. Okay, it is closed. All right. Unfortunately, there's no extra space under the hood as there's no front trunk. This is typically the case for these shared platforms that can accommodate various powertrains. The space efficiency under the hood isn't as good as a result. If you're new here, Kaya's EV is named after my dog, Kaya. While she does enjoy car rides, she isn't allowed inside many other cars than my own, of course. So I have a stuntman, Kaya. Hopefully this will give you an idea of what it would be like for a medium-sized dog to sit in the back seat or in a hatch or anywhere else in the car. As you can see, Kaya's stunt double has no problem sitting in the back. Or if they want to look outside, that's more realistic. In the hatch, it's too small. Dog of this size would not be comfortable and sitting down, she does not fit. If he had a smaller dog, maybe. The Kia Niro EV has a battery pack comprised of lithium ion polymer cells. It has a capacity of 64 kilowatt hours and can output up to 170 kilowatts. The pack has a nominal voltage of 356 volts, which is pretty normal for an EV. Its maximum DC charging rate is 100 kilowatts, which is a bit lower than I would have hoped for in a car made in 2022. This gives a car a C rating around a 1.5. A lot of newer cars are coming out with C ratings a little over a 3, so there is a bit to be desired from the charging rate. 
Kia advertises this car as being able to charge up to 80% within an hour. This slower charging time might make it a bit more difficult to road trip with. I road trip with my car and it has basically the same range as this one, but the charging rate is much faster. It's definitely possible to go on longer drives with it, but you'll be spending a little more time at the chargers. All of the trims come with the same 7.2 kilowatt onboard charger, which should get you a full charge in about nine and a half hours. You can also charge it using the included adapter off of Household Outlet if you'd like. Kia also sells an additional cold weather package which includes a battery heater and heat pump. I wish they'd add this by default as a heat pump is significantly more efficient than a standard resistive heater. This can result in a better range in colder weather as older EVs with resistive heaters did see an impact to range while in use. As always, we'll be testing out the fast charging rate towards the end of the video. The EX and EX Premium trims are almost identical, however the S trim does have a few different features than the others. The most notable is the screen size. Unlike the EX trims which have a 10.3 inch screen, here we have an 8 inch LCD display. We also have a nice digital display in the front. The layout incorporates several dials and physical buttons. You have climate controls here, volume dial, and additional controls on your steering wheel. A ton going on here, but overall it has straightforward controls. This car also has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can charge your phone through this wireless charging pad here. Standard in the vehicle are the heated front seats and 10-way power adjustable driver seat. There are three USB-A ports, two in the front and one under the armrest. Your center screen is a touch screen and has a lot of basic functionality. You can control your climate in here. You could also see some of your EV functions. You can look at the charging percentage um, set a departure time. You can adjust your charging percentage in this menu. For a DC fast charger, we're currently set at 90%. Let me put it down to 80%. You can also change your AC charger. Here we at 100%. You can lower that or make it higher. This graph is pretty interesting. It shows you where the energy is being drawn to. So here right now we're parked and um, the car is on, but we don't have the AC on. You can see the electronics right now are taking 0.18 kilowatts, 0.22 kilowatts. But if we turn the AC on, we'll see this number change. And right here you can see that climate is using 1.78 kilowatts. Okay, let me turn the AC off. And this bar at the bottom here shows where most of the energy is being used. And of course, the drivetrain is the one that uses the most. The back seats are comfy. There's a lot of cushion in them. There's not much to say about the back seats other than that your passengers have an AC vent here in the front. The car will detect the key fob and all you need to do is press on the brake and hold on on that. And we're ready to drive. There are four driving modes, Eco, Normal, Sport, and Eco Plus. Additionally, you have these regen paddles that are on either side of the steering wheel. If you want to come to a complete stop using only regen, you would hold down on the left paddle. Favorably, there's also an auto hold button here at the bottom, and every time you drive, you just push it down and it'll engage the hold. So when you come to a stop, this will have your car at a stop as well without you actually having to hold down on the brake. When you hold on on the paddle to come to a complete stop, it's not as quick as I'd like it to be. So for example, let me speed up a little bit and pull on that left paddle. So here we're going 14 miles per hour. I'm gonna pull it down. We're slowing down, slowing down, and not a complete stop yet, and now we are. So it brings you down quickly, but not fast enough like in other EVs that have one pedal driving. Usually when you let off, it instantly just starts slowing down super quick. This one takes a little bit more time to slow down. And again, we're at a stop. But region overall is pretty strong and I like it. Inside the cabin, it's a little bit noisy. And that sound that I hear coming through is the exterior speakers that are used to alert pedestrians. And that's fine, it's, it's loud enough for the person outside to hear, but it's pretty loud in here too. And I'm confusing it a little bit. Is this the motor or is this the pedestrian speakers? But I'm pretty sure that's that speaker. That volume is really loud. 
This car is set to do 0 to 60 in around 6.2 seconds. So let's try accelerating it. So I didn't have a good grip in the beginning. I felt like we were kind of skidding before getting any quicker. Um, it accelerates okay. It's still very energetic, but um, yeah, I guess it's not for accelerating that way. I like these seating adjustments. For the first time, I am not at the highest setting, believe it or not. And I have a very clear view of the front. I think I can actually go a little bit lower and I still have a good view. So if you're a shorter person like me, I approve this car. Let's not forget about the driving assistant features. The ES trim comes standard with things like blind spot warning and lane keeping assist. However, the ES trim does not come with navigation based smart cruise control. Overall, it's a cool and stable drive and it drives well over bumps too. So it's kind of funny how loud the backup sound is on the Kia Niro EV. Now I'm not laughing at the purpose of the backup speaker, I'm just laughing at the volume that is really high on it. So I'm going to see how far I need to walk until I can't hear it anymore. So here it is up close. Now we're going to start walking away. It's still kind of loud. Still hear it. Okay, at this point you can hear beeping in the background, but it's going to be a little tough to tell what that actually is. Well, at least you'll know when a Kia Niro EV is backing up, even if it's this far away. Before we start charging, let's check in on our miles. We are at 10% and the car estimates we have 27 miles left. The odometer is at 3,097 miles. So by my estimate, we should be getting around 247 miles if we ran it all the way down to zero. So that's actually eight miles further than the EPA estimate. It might even be better if we were driving on Eco or Eco Plus mode. Well, let's plug in and see how the car charges. So as expected, quick charging the car was a bit slow. I'm using a brand new EVgo charging station that opened up and I did have issues with the first charger I plugged into. After hopping on a second charger, things worked normally for the rest of the charge. It looked like the car had software defined limits in place as our charging curve isn't really a curve, just flat lines. We started off at about 70 kilowatts and that held for quite a while before going down to 57 kilowatts and then reducing rate two more times. I believe if Kia had utilized more sensor data rather than using pre-programmed charging speeds, we could have seen better charging rates for this car. Though their new EV lineups like the Kia V6 have a very impressive charging rate and curve. However, this car is built on a totally different platform, so the battery pack in this car is different from the EV6. So of course we don't expect identical results. In total, to go from 10% to 80%, it took 50 minutes. So we're on track with Kia's expected 0 to 80% time of one hour. The Kia Niro EV is practical and a great choice for commuting. Its charging rate isn't the fastest, but still quick enough to get you where you need to go. Looking forward, the redesigned 2023 Kia Niro EV has been unveiled recently with a new exterior design. It will have a targeted range of 253 miles and will be available to purchase in all 50 states. Since the newer generation Nero will be coming out soon, it may be worth it to wait for a purchase on that one. If you're considering getting this version of the Nero EV, I would recommend adding the cold weather package for better range in colder climates. Thanks for spending time with me today. Have an EV I can review? Email me at info at Make sure to subscribe for more EV content and follow me on social media at Kai's EV and Kai's Tesla. Kai's my dog. And check out my website for more EV resources at Kai's EV that's all for now and happy charging.